to the world and to the kingdom citizens. I greet you in the precious holy name of Yeshua Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, who said in his word, John 8 and 32, and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Hi, I'm Dr. John Curry, ambassador, Pan-African, and welcome to the Embassy of the Kingdom of Heaven on Earth. If you want to follow this podcast, please subscribe to JC Global, Embassy TV One, ring the bell, and hit the thumbs up button. Today's message is, in t- is entitled, Blacks Must Detoxify Our Minds. Blacks must detoxify our minds. And as we're detoxifying our minds, then we will understand that we was brought to America in the year of 1619. We worked as actual slaves for 244 years. We had 100 years of old Jim Crow, separate but equal. This so-called separate but equal, but was never equal. This was a standard established by the Supreme Court of the United States of America. This was Plessy versus Ferguson in 1896, which undergird racial segregation. Those that enslaved blacks in America and around the world was heinous, vicious, vile, moving as demons in order to attack a people. The black slaves went through all kinds of violent attacks. Slaves went through contextual violence. This is strategic violence, territorial violence, retaliatory violence, ritualistic violence. They went through horrification, brutalization, and abandonment. Our people was taught violence by going through violence, and therefore, you're seeing violence on the street by some of our young people. The trauma from slavery can actually be passed down through the genes. The epigenetic by Dr. Rachel Yahuda professor of psychiatry and Icon School of Medicine at Mount Center conducted a depth of research into epigenetics and transgenerational transmission of slave pathology. Slavery was wicked and vicious for us as black people. Slaves experienced transgenerational transmission of pathology. Sociologist Dr. Joy DeGruy have studied post-traumatic slave syndrome, Stockholm syndrome, when the victim loved their captors more than themselves. As black people, some of us still love our captors more than we love ourselves. We get happy when the white man comes around us. We get happy to see our white master every two and four years when they come into our churches, not knowing we have been conditioned. We have been conditioned for the position that we're in through traumatic factors, through being beaten over and over again, through desensitizing our culture, as well as jamming their culture into us, trying to convert us to make us to be like them. And some of us are still walking around with straight hair, knowing you have coarse hair. Still walking around trying to satisfy and to please the white man. He's your master because your mind has not been changed. And you're not removing the detoxification of the traumatic factors that are within you. Detoxifying and decolonizing a black mind is a meaningful thing, an active discipline that practice to heal from the force of slavery and colonialism that perpetuates subjugation and exploitation of black mind, body, spirit, and land. Malcolm said it best when he said, we have been bamboozled. We have been run amok, led astray, 
and now taught to be 21st century slaves. Blacks must detoxify their minds and declutter their minds from the odious toxicity of white supremacy and brainwashing by Willie Lent. In this process, when blacks, us, you and I, begin to detoxify our mind, we can move into a better place. A multi-generational oppression of us for centuries of chattel slavery and institutional racism can leave a chemical mark on a person gene who forefathers were in fact slaves. And some of us are acting particular ways and don't even know why we're acting that way. It's because we have not gotten rid of the transgenerational transmission a pathology, the epigenetic me mechanisms such as colonialism and slavery, and the displacement of trauma. Sometimes we can be traumatized by seeing things. Other things can trigger us. So as black folks, we have been traumatized for the last 464 years. We've been under trauma, so that's why it's important for us to heal and to build and get to know each other. We've learned how to integrate with the white man. Now we must learn how to integrate with each other. We must do what was being done in 1906 when Rosewood and many other uh, cities was coming together because blacks were healing and building at the same time. It's important for us to go there. This violence was physical as well as mental. The physical shackles have been removed, but the mental shackles remain. Many of us are mad at each other and don't even know why. We've been programmed to hate one another and to love every other race. That must stop. Well, how will it stop? We must go through a detoxification process of what has been beaten into us. We are not animals, not, pro not property to be used and discarded. For the last 400 years, we have been responding to white supremacy, stating, get your boot off my neck. That's a volition of will. We must take his boot off our neck, remove his boot off our neck and stand up on our feet and begin to walk as men, loving our women, loving our children, loving our families. No longer can we say, get your boot off our neck. We, was, we must not allow ourselves to be put into a position where anybody boot can now be on our neck. It's time for us to stand up, straighten up, pull our pants up and be men. We are men and women and children of our forefathers. We are builders of and founders of great ancient black world civilization. Only when we truly come to know where we came from, only then will we know where we are going. When we know who our forefathers were, men like Imhotep, Mansa Musa, Makeda, Queen of Sheba, King Shaka Zulu, King Hannibal, and those great Africans, only then will we know where we're going and what we're all about. We must come to an understanding that no longer will we allow ourselves to be prostituted by other races. We must hold our head high, stick our chest out, and be the men and women that God wants us to be. We must de- decompose ourselves of any traumatic factors. We must realize that we are men and that we are women. We are family. And when the black family come together, when black folks pool that $1.5 or $1.6 trillion, then they are nowhere serious. We are the ones that are hurting each other. We know what we've been through. And now it's time to go and make our own destiny by honoring our forefathers. We know how terrible it was. 
We know what we've been through. While we're healing and while we're building, while we're doing what we're doing, we got to understand our history is our history. And now we must create a new history for ourselves and for our children. No longer can we sit by idly and crying about how the white man treated us or how all other groups treated us. We must come together as one group, one people, one purpose, one goal, one mindset, thinking black, buying black, supporting black, building up black. Wherever their goal, there's black. We must be there to help each other to do what we know we can do for ourselves. And when we do that, then we can be reminded of these black geniuses that are out here today that many do not want us to know about. A brother by the name of Dr. Thomas Manson, by the, Dr. Thomas O. Manson, a black man who is an inventor of the fiber optic nanotechnology, who also built the first bullet train in many nations. Dr. Manson is also a responsible for the internet and creator of the Black Disney World. But the white Europeans do not want you to know that because when you start knowing what other blacks are doing, you start to build hope within yourself and you start to believe that I can do it as well. Dr. Thomas Mansa built the bullet plane. He has urban intellectuals and hold four 14 patents and is founder of the National Academy of Inventors. Dr. Mark Dean, a black man, invented a computer processing chip. He holds three of nine patents, co-creator of the IBM personal computer released in 1981. They don't want you to know that. They don't want you to know that the Dalgons of Mali were studying the stars while the Europeans were in cages. They don't want you to know how great you are. They don't want to know you to know how brilliant you are. As black people, you are brilliant. And not only brilliant, you are excellent. And not only excellent, you are creative. And not only creative, you are the most resilient people on the planet. But they want you to think that you're just crackheads and dope addicts, whores and pimps, swinging on poles, selling drugs. As they release guns and drugs in your community, sent rival gangs against each other and watch you on the Channel 5 News as you kill each other. Why? Because you don't know who you are. But when you begin to know who you are, the world will tremble because you will be reminded of the great minds of Imhotep, the first medical doctor in the world. You'll be reminded of the University of Timbuktu, the first university on the planet. You'll be reminded you will connect back to your epigenetics and your epigenetics will take you back to who you were. Your epigenetics will begin to move the marker, remove the markers of slavery from your mind and you'll begin to see yourself as you were. You'll begin to see yourself as kings and queens. You'll begin to see yourself as intellectuals and great minds and great people who built ancient pyramids, who studied the stars before NASA was even created. You'll be able to see yourself for who you really are and who you really are. You are the first man, first woman, first family, first nation, and first builders of ancient world creation. You'll be reminded of the University of Timbuktu. As you go to the University of Timbuktu, men like Plato, Aristotle, Socrates, Euripides, and Aristophanes, along with Hippocrates, what psychologists now use as, and medical doctors use as the hypocritic oath. All of that came from you with your black self. They love for you to be acting like animals so they can take all the things that God has blessed us with and use it for themselves. 
We are the ones that created nations. We are the ones that created civilization. We are the one that God brought into the world first. We civilized, we civilized with the first civilized people on the planet. And all others got their civilization from the ancient climatic people who are now called the Egyptian. It was the black ancient climatic and Egyptians civilized the Greeks. It was the Greeks who civilized the Romans. It was the Romans who civilized France, Spain, and all of Western Europe. And they stole everything that they have in order to make civilization. We are the one true black African that the world, that the world fear. And those are those black Africans who live in America. But God has brought us knowledge. God has released the truth. You see, truth crust to the earth will rise again. And that truth is now rising. And the world is beginning to see who we are. Whether you claim that you are Jew, whether you claim that you are Hebrew, there's one thing missing when it comes to us. We must accept Yeshua Messiah as our personal savior. We must accept Yeshua HaMashiach as our personal savior. We must accept Jesus the Christ as our personal savior and become kingdom citizen. Yeshua Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach are all one. We know him best by calling him Jesus. Why is that important? It's important because just as the cross behind me, that's his grace and his mercy. It was God's grace that brought us through the fight on the continent. It was God's grace that brought us through the Middle Passage, sailing on a ship called Jesus. And that in Spanish means Jesus. It was God's grace and mercy that brought us through the 13 colonies of the United States. It was God's grace and mercy that carried us through 246 years of slavery in America. And they did not break us. We're not broken. We're just scattered. We're not broken. We're the black diamond. And they know who we are. And we must come to know who we are ourselves. It was God's grace and mercy on the plantation. God grace and mercy when we came through slavery 246 years. It was God's grace and mercy through the civil rights movement. God's grace and mercy marching on the street. It was God's grace and mercy going through the lynching in 1906. God has always been with us black people. He sent his son to die for our sins. Now we can't get free, truly free, until we accept Yeshua Messiah as our Lord and Savior, for he is the one that brought us through. We have fought back for centuries and we are still fighting as they're trying to take us back to slavery 2.0. As they're trying to bring colonialism on the continent of Africa 2.0. But God is on our side. So as we detoxify our minds, and come to know who our Savior really is and come to submit to him as we come to bow to him, as we come to love him, as we come to recognize him as our Savior, then God is going to do not only what he's already done, but God has great plans for the black man. God want us to lead as we move forward in this next millennial, God want us to be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Well, why do you say that? I say that because God put into us love for every human being on the planet. He put into us hospitality where we love everyone 
but everyone doesn't love us. So it's time for us to lead again and we must be ready. And how do we lead? We lead through you, Yeshua Messiah. We lead through loving one another. We lead through doing the work of the King. And his name is Yeshua Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. When we study who we were, we will know who we are. And when we know who we are, our minds will be detoxified. And when our minds are detoxified, we will move in the black African pride of loving ourselves and loving our neighbor as ourselves, being unified for one mission, one goal, and that is to be ready for Yeshua to return. We are not haters of every group. As black people, we never hate. We've always loved. And when we love, we're the ones that can affect and make true change. So we have to do what God needs for us to do. But in the meantime, we must love upon each other until the Europeans stop white supremacy and stop hating everything other than themselves. In the meantime, as blacks, Pan-Africanism is, is the course. But when God, through the love of Christ, come through us, white men as well as blacks, then we'll move towards the kingdom and the power of God, that all men shall come together and be what Yeshua wants us to be. I trust you can receive it. I trust you can understand it. I trust that you understand that it's all about Yeshua. God sees us. God knows what we're doing. God want us to change. In particular, God want the white man to stop his vicious racism because his genetics is about to run out. The white man is mad because he has the recessive gene. He's mad because he, he cannot reproduce himself. When a black man have sex with a white woman and she get pregnant, the baby is black. Whatever a black man touches become himself. Whatever the white man touches become the other. White man touches a, a black woman, he has a black baby. Asian woman, Asian baby. Hispanic woman, Hispanic baby. He is angry. He's upset because his genetics cannot match the genetic melanin of black as well as brown. He has a recessive gene. And this is why he's trying to kill everybody else to maintain his survival. But God is doing a new thing. And that new thing, is he's going to place people that understand love. And when blacks get back into position of power, God understand love. Black men understand love. But the white man cannot accept love because if he do, he have to love everybody, which means that his sons and his daughters may want to love everybody too. Which in essence, will eventually wipe him out. So if you want to know why the problems are going on in the world, I just explained to you why. But as black people, it's time for us to detoxify our mind, remove the clutter, Remove the transgenerational transmission of a wicked pathology and let Yeshua Messiah be our guide. I trust that you can believe it. I trust that you can receive it as you make ready for what God is getting ready to do. Remember, kingdom first, Pan-African second. Kingdom first, Pan-African second. But as long as, Pan, as the white man, the European, won't line up and be what he need to be as a kingdom citizen, Pan-Africans shall rule until Yeshua will come. 
until Yeshua return. But it's always, always the kingdom of God first. As black people, we hate no one. It's always the kingdom of God first. And from that, I trust you can believe it. I trust you can receive it. God bless. Until next time.